here are our accession numbers and here is the genome we would like to map against. The first step is to download these SRA datasets from Sequence Read Archive. To do that, we're going to go to Get Data, select Faster Queue Than Load, select List of SRA Accessions 1 per line, make sure Accessions is selected here, and we'll click Execute. Now this is finished, you can see that uh, this tool generates a number of data sets. Uh, a priori, you usually don't know whether the data sets that you're downloading are going to be single and or paired end data. So it creates two collections, a single end collection and a paired end collection. And in this case, only paired end collection contains any data sets, as you can see. So therefore, both of these are paired end data sets. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to QC this data using fast P tool. So I'm going to find it here. And we are dealing with a paired end collection here. Uh, this is the collection. And the only other thing that I'm going to change here is in the output option, I'm going to set output JSON to yes. Now FastP is finished. Uh, what it really does, it uh, trims adapters and uh, it can also trim low quality bases. And now we can map these reads against the genome. I upload the genome into history, it's right here. I'm going to be using uh, BWEMM. And my genome is now in the history, so I can choose this option. Select the genome, it's right here. And my reads are in the form of a paired collection. And the collection I'm going to be using, because I have actually several collections now, this is the original collection, this is how data was downloaded from SRA. And now it's processed by, by FASTP, so that's the data set I want to use now, this data set number 11 in this case. I'm not going to change any other parameters, I'm just going to start running it. Next, let's remove duplicates. Remove duplicates tool is a part of the pcard package. So we're going to go here uh, and select mark duplicates tool. I'm going to use collection as an input. This time it's a collection produced by BWMM. It contains two BAM files. And I'm going to switch this to yes because I don't want duplicate reads to be included in the output. At this point we can use this deduplicated mapped dataset to actually go ahead and start calling variants. So here we are going to call variants using tool called uh, low freak, so which is specifically designed for calling low frequency variants in mixtures, such as for example viral or bacterial samples. So uh, I'm going to scroll and find variant calling section, and low freak is actually a collection of tools. So uh, the first uh, tool that we're going to be using is going to is called realigned reads. It takes care of the indels, make sure that the indels are inserted in a consistent uh, way. Again, we're using collection, now the output of mark duplicates tool. Um, it does require a reference, and that reference is in our history. So we're going to select this genome as fast a uh, to do this. The next step is to insert indel qualities. This is required to be able to call indels. Again, we are using collection as an input. This time, this is collection produced by realign reads. I'm going to use dindel approach, and that requires reference genome again. So we're going to select our reference from history and run it. 
And now we can actually call variants with law free proper. Um, so input again as a collection produced by uh, indoor quality recalculation tool. Uh, we're going to select the um, reference genome. Now this tool requires a little bit more configuration. So we want to call both uh, single nucleotide variants and indols. And we're going to tweak some of the variant calling parameters. For example, let's set minimal coverage to say 50. Uh, set minimum base quality to, well, let's set it to 20. And mapping quality to 20. That means that uh, multi-mapped reads will not be used for calling variants. Everything else we can leave the same. So variants are called. Uh, you can see that we now have two data sets in VCF format. VCF format looks like this. Now we need to annotate them, meaning which variants are encoding regions, which are not, and so on. Uh, for this, we're going to be using SNPF, but we're going to use a special version of SNPF designed specifically for SARS-CoV-2, and it's found here in the virology section. So I'm going to choose that. Again, input is this collection produced by LowFreak. This is the correct version of the genome. It's um, version 2. I'm going to select these two fields. Nothing upstream, downstream, nothing here, and just run it. Now that this is done, you can see that these data sets are simply, again, VCF files. It's just uh, these VCF files now contain much more information about what these particular variants do. So uh, to make downstream analysis easier, I would convert this into tab delimited format. And uh, I will do this using a snip sif tool. Snip sift extract fields on this collection. The fields I'm gonna enter like this. You don't have to retype this from the screen that you see this right now. You can, uh, the same list of fields is listed in a corresponding tutorial, which goes along with this uh, video. I will select one effect per line. We don't really need multiple field separator here, but I will use dot for an empty field. And now Okay, you can see that at this point, these are simply tab delimited data sets. So they're a little bit easier to work with. But it's still two data sets. What we would like to do is to combine all of this into a single one, which we can then use for a secondary analysis. For example, we can load this in Jupyter notebooks or do anything we want with it. So in order to convert this, it's a collection, I need to collapse it. And I will go here to collection operations, use collects, co collapse collection tool. I will select this collection I want to collapse. I will use one header line and I will also prepend file name, same line and each line in data set. This will essentially set the data set name, which is these. It will prepend every line in both data sets with the name of the corresponding data set. For example, everything from here would be prepended with SRR 11954102. So let's see what we'll get. So now it's no longer a collection, it's just one data set. If we click on the eye icon, you will see that it, there's a new first column, and that column indicates from which data set these data comes. Of course,
course, uh, in this case here, we only have two data sets, but you can imagine how this would work exactly the same way we have a thousand or 10,000 data sets. And so this is the table we can work with. That's the list of variants that we would be interested in. At several points in this tutorial, we generated some summary statistics, logs, about the data that we have. First, this log is, the first such log, for example, is this JSON file generated by FastB. And the other one is the uh, mark duplicates uh, output, mark duplicates metrics. We can use uh, two of these uh, summary statistics data sets to uh, paint a picture how good our data is. And for this purpose, we're going to use multi-QC tool. So first, let's uh, tell it about FASTP. So this is our data set number 13. That's FASTP on collection, on our data set collection. We're gonna select that. And the second is the um, P card card tool and specifically mark duplicates this is the other data set so it's going to be collection number 24 let's uh, visualize these two summary statistics if you click on the eye icon you will see this graphical output of multi QC and there's a lot of information here. For example, there's, there's information about how many reads you have, what's the percentage of duplicates, how many of them contain adapter sequences. You can actually see that in one of the data set there is quite a few. And this is uh, perhaps uh, one of the most important metrics here is that the distribution, distribution of base qualities. So you can see that these data sets are actually quite good.